So we're looking at the Sonoff Zigbee Smart Switch or the ZB Mini. So this is going to work in the US as well as many other countries because it does support various voltages and frequencies. So Sonoff did send me this Zigbee Mini for review, but that's not gonna change the bias of it. If it sucks, I'll tell you it sucks as we've done before. I really don't care based on what manufacturers may think. They should take the constructive criticism and make something better. But don't worry, I don't have that feeling about this switch here. And of course, we'll leave all the links down below and they are going to be affiliate links that doesn't raise the price for you and it does help out the channel. So we do appreciate it. And if you think you've already seen this, well, you're probably right because it's little brother or big brother, however you want to say it, that was before it. This is the one with the ESP chip inside. But it, eh, we didn't like this one too much based on some previous looks on this. Had that little antenna that stuck out the side. And they were kind of hard to flash, even with DIY mode and everything. But a lot of people do like to do the Zigbee, which is... No flashing, just use it straight out of the box. And these are typically meant to go inside the wall inside your electrical box. And one thing I did like that they did expand on was they did change the color of the terminals because these are the two terminals that are low voltage that are used for the actual switch. And I have seen some people run these using the mains voltage in the wall and I would not recommend that even though I've seen the wiring schemes on various websites it's just I'm not going to run low voltage over my mains voltage type of wire in the house because you never know who's going to come after me if for some reason somebody has to and I don't want them to run mains voltage into this and I don't trust what else may have been done the wall that I can't see but that's just my opinion. So pretty simple little guy here and let's pop that open. I want to see the difference of what is inside compared to this one. 16 amp, but apparently maybe the terminals or the solder traces themselves are not up to 16 amp. So they're saying this is a 10 amp. There are various pads on here. I know somebody wants to really get into this chipset. They're more than welcome to, but you really don't have to being Zigbee. And we will be showing you pairing this up with the Sonoff Zigbee Bridge in both the Home Assistant ZHA mode and the Tasmoda Zigbee mode. And if you do want to do it in the EWI Link app, you're more than welcome to do that as well. If you just want to keep things the same without and just keep stuff in the cloud. But usually we don't do that here. So as you can see, we do have the Wi-Fi version on the right, and this is the Zigbee on the left. They are pretty similar layouts that they kind of kept the same and just simply changed some stuff. So they do have the internal antenna over here at the top. It looks like they were going to have an antenna one maybe for some diversity type, but maybe that did change. Maybe it didn't make a difference. And I did notice that the Zigbee chipset, the MG21, I believe was the same exact chip that we saw on the actual Zigbee bridge itself. So enough about all the guts on the switch, as I probably bored you already to begin with. So just a couple things I may have missed. And of course, the price is subject to change. So do check the links down below for the current price. Now, one thing I did note was this little small print here, which makes sense based on where that Zigbee antenna is, is to basically flip it over where the back faces out. That way you have the best coverage for the Zigbee. And this does pair up as a router, so it will repeat other Zigbee signals to say battery powered sensors, etc. And yeah, don't put it in a metal box. Replace that box. That's just not going to do well because that's just like this perfect Faraday cage. 
You will need to use just a regular on off switch with this, not any type of momentary button or rocker, etc. So you're not going to do any type of long press or multi press type stuff. It's going to be your simple on and off with this Zigbee. And do take note when you're wiring this up and because it's sometimes hard to read, make sure that you don't put the line in the second neutral. I have heard of someone doing that and it does pop the breaker pretty quick. So for the ones that are using this with the ZHA integration in Home Assistant, it's pretty simple to pair it up. Simply go to your coordinator, which will be the Zigbee Bridge. And mine may look a little weird since I do have it zoomed in just for people watching this on smaller devices. And we do have mains power going to this. And again, this is low voltage through the two gray terminals. And we're just using some little jumper wires going to a regular Decora type of switch that goes in the wall. Now I would suggest not to mount it in the box just yet before you pair it, give it a test, make sure that way you don't have to keep running back and forth. So if the light is not blinking, you will need to put it into pairing mode. So simply push the button, should be for like five seconds and it should start blinking. If it does not start blinking, since I did have that issue on the live streams, cycle the power off and then turn it back on and then go ahead and press the button. It should come back up in the blinking pairing mode. And once that's ready, go ahead and hit add devices. Now I like to hit sometimes when it's pairing, hit the show logs and that way you can watch it doing something instead of just like, well, is it pairing or not? But you can see it did pair fairly quickly only takes 15 20 seconds at most if you do fail at one time just go ahead and put it back into pairing mode and then try it again we'll just call it zb mini one and we'll leave the area like it is and it does come up as a light bulb and you can see we do have the device configured and it is coming up as device type router which that does mean this would be beneficial if you have a battery powered sensor or some other type of Zigbee device and you need to use this as that type of stepping stone. That way it, the coordinator will talk to this switch and then it will send the signal over to the other one. Kind of builds that mesh. And we'll go ahead and give it a test. And you can see it does turn on the little red light on the device itself pretty almost instant that it updates so there's not going to be any type of delay that you may have issues with and it's pretty nice that it just pops right in no flashing no nothing just goes straight into home assistant it's pretty simple can't really mess it up now of course if you don't want to use the sonoff zigbee bridge you want to use any kind of type of zigbee sticks or whatever it's pretty much going to be the same if you are using the zha now if you're using something else you may have to follow their pairing such as zigbee to mqtt so in this implementation we will be using just tasmoto zigbee because i know i've had a lot of questions of hey can i get two or three of these Zigbee bridges and pair my devices up because I've got multiple buildings or I've got a shop in the back and just can't build that mesh in between. But then Home Assistant doesn't let you put multiple coordinators in the ZHA integration. Well, here's the way you can do that using the MQTT to talk back and forth to your devices. I would just recommend that you have your Zigbee devices on different channels and we will leave the link down below to the wiki on all the Zigbee commands that we do use here. So do make sure that the Zigbee mini is blinking again and again power cycle it and then hold down that button for five seconds it should go into that blinking pairing mode. And then what you want to type is ZB permit join space one on the console and then we'll hit enter and you should see the zigbee mini start to do its pairing and you can see the green lights going solid and it's talking back and forth and setting everything up pretty cool that they've built this all straight into tasmoto definitely some excellent development work there so you also will notice the led in this mode is pulsing or breathing back and forth 
it should go out and go back to normal once the pairing mode has timed out. And there you are, pairing mode disabled and the LED has gone off. Now if we do go back and go to main menu, you should see your device and you can assign friendly names, but we're not gonna go over that in this particular video. If you'd like to see more of how to use the Zigbee commands, definitely leave a comment down below and possibly we'll do a future video on how to do the control of everything of your Zigbee devices. So now the question is, is it decent? Is it good? Yeah, I didn't have any issues with it. Once I learned that one little issue I had where for some reason it wouldn't go into pairing mode, and I just found that it was getting hung up for some reason, but didn't run into this issue except that one day and everything's been great with it. And I haven't had any issues with it falling off the Zigbee network or becoming unresponsive. It just works well. And it does do the router. So no flashing It's perfect for that crowd that just wants to get into doing Zigbee. And plus, they are really excellent price compared to many other in-wall modules. So if you want to pick one up, check out the links down below. Pick the store you like, and we do appreciate it. They are affiliate links, but there's no extra cost to you. And I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It helps bring new projects and products to the channel each week. Thank you. And if you're not a subscriber, smash that button down below. It's not a switch. It's a button. And y'all take care.